Here's a really challenging exercise that's going to combine our knowledge of scales and arpeggios. So taking a look at our G major scale, what I want us to do is I want us to go through all of our diatonic chords in the key of G, and we're going to ascend the arpeggio, descend part of the major scale until we land on the next note in the scale. So what I mean by that is check us out. I'll start on G, my one, and I'll go up G major seven, just the G major seven arpeggio, and now I'm gonna descend the major scale until I land on the next note, which would be A. So check us out, up G major seven arpeggio, descend major scale, land on the next, which is A here. I'm gonna go up A minor seven, I'm going to descend the scale until I land on the next note, B. I'm going to go up B, descend scale, C, descend scale. You see what's happening here? And we're going to continue that pattern all the way up the scale to the top. So again, we're always going arpeggio, scale, arpeggio, scale, ascending arpeggio, descending scale. That is the magic formula here. So let's try this together nice and slow. So as an exercise to try applying our new arpeggios, let's go back to that two, five, one chord progression in the key of G, which again is A minor seven, D seven to G major seven. And what we're gonna do is over A minor seven, we're gonna play A minor seven arpeggio, over D seven, we'll play D dominant seven arpeggio, and over G major seven, we'll play our G major seven arpeggio. We'll do this both on the low E string and the A string roots and try mixing them together to get a better flow on the neck. Let's give it a try. Another secret to learning jazz and becoming a great jazz soloist. Learn jazz tunes that you like, right? There's so many different jazz standards and people are going to be like, you have to learn how to play this one. You need to learn how to play Giant Steps and you need to learn Misty and Autumn Leaves and all the things you are, right? And all these songs are really brilliant and amazing, but I found it was really hard for me when I first started playing jazz to learn these songs that I just didn't like. Like if I don't like the song, it's gonna be painful to practice it and it's not gonna be enjoyable or inspiring. So find jazz that inspires you and that encourages you to play and that you want to play. And then it will be such a easier, more enjoyable process. So for a homework assignment on this melody idea, pick two different jazz standards that you love, learn the chords and the melody. You always want to be able to play every single melody on the fretboard. And I want you to learn it all over the neck. Learn it in different octaves. Right, I think that's all I can do. Right, learn it all over the place so that you have the freedom when you are soloing, if you wanna quote the melody or you wanna fall back on the melody, you don't have to go grabbing it in the only spot you know it, right? So really learning it all over the neck is gonna be super, super important when it comes to learning how to put together a good jazz solo. And again, I think a good starting point is just picking one or two standards that you love and really master the whole song in itself. Learn the melody and the harmony and know it through and through on the neck so that you are playing it in your sleep. Normally when we think of inversions, we think of chord inversions, right? We think of maybe our triad inversions, which is really just taking a chord, for example, root, third, fifth, inverting it is taking the arrangement of those three notes so that the root is no longer the lowest note. You can do the same idea with your arpeggios. So we've always thought, cool, if I say play C major seven, we always think start on C and end on C. There's our C major seven arpeggio. So what happens if I play my C major seven arpeggio, but instead of starting on C, maybe I start on E, which is the third. And now I'm gonna play C major seven arpeggio, starting on E and ending on E. It'll sound like this. And 
and this gives us a totally different feel to that arpeggio. You could do the same thing starting on the fifth or the seventh. Here's starting on the fifth. You could also start on the seventh. Right, so experiment with this across all your seventh chord types, major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, minor seven flat five, and diminished seven, and see what different sounds you can pull out of these arpeggios. Using the melody from a jazz tune is one of the most effective ways to build a jazz solo. Now, there's so many reasons why it's great. One, we always have something to fall back on. If we get totally lost or we play a wrong note and we don't know where we are in the form, as long as we remember the melody, we can always start playing the melody and get us right back on track. And the melody is always going to sound great because it's the melody of the song, right? It is the whole song. So having that ability to be able to fall back on the melody is one really comfortable safety net that I've always taken advantage of. But more importantly, it's a really great starting point to build a solo, right? Think about giving a presentation at school, right? Say you're giving a presentation on dinosaurs, right? It helps to mention every now and again, back when dinosaurs were around, da 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 da, or dinosaurs like to do this, right? You wanna keep repeating your main topic of dinosaurs. And you can think of using a melody from a solo as the same thing. You're kind of restating, hey, we're still on this song, here's a little bit of a familiar chunk that you already know, and now I'm gonna lay some more information on it, which is my own creative soloing, and tying it back into the melody, right? It's a really comfortable, familiar way for the listener to digest our solos. And it also is a great way to create a lot of variety in our solos, right? If we start playing off the melody, it's very familiar and comfortable. And then when we start building the solo, it really helps us add, when we get further away from that melody, it's gonna help us add tension and really create the arc of a good solo. So the general approach that I like to take when utilizing the melody of a song to build a solo is I like to play parts of the melody. Maybe I'll vary the rhythm a little bit, add in a couple extra notes. Maybe I'll play the melody for a bar and then I'll put my own idea, which is just gonna be a mixture of arpeggios and scales, and then tie that back into the melody. So we're kind of sidestepping around the melody. You can think of like, I'm gonna play a little bit of the melody, give you a little bit of my sauce, touch back on the melody for a second to pull you back in, give you some more sauce, right? And it's this kind of nice ebb and flow, again, Great safety net too, if you ever get lost, always fall back on the melody, it's always there for you. So a great example that I always use is Mary Had a Little Lamb. Very easy, simple, memorable melody. Now, I'll give you an example of how I might approach this, utilizing that melody to help me build my solo, but also interjecting my own ideas along the way. A lot of this is gonna be rhythmic and melodic development off of the melody. So I might change the melody around a little bit, get some new colors out, and let's see where it takes me. Right, so just a really quick, tiny example there, but you can see how many cool ideas I was able to generate just around the skeleton of that melody. And if I ever, for some reason, got completely lost and I don't know where I am, I know I can always fall back to Right? So it's just a really powerful tool for you to add to your toolbox when it comes to developing and starting with solos. Thank you.